didn't mean to take up your sweet time. I'll give it back one of these days. If I don't see you no more in this world. For me, there's two kinds of playing when you're playing blues unaccompanied. Two strands, if you like. The first strand I would call lyrical playing. And this is where you're tending to play single notes. You're not really constrained by time issues, since you're not playing with anyone else. And you can concentrate on extracting the maximum emotional content of that particular sequence of notes. <laughs> Now tunes come into this category as well, since if you're not playing with other people in a band or such, you can again just concentrate on the emotional side and speed up or slow down just as the mood takes you. so on. But that's not the strand that I'm concerned with here in this video. What I'd like to talk about is vamping, which tends to be more chordal playing, and here timing and the beat are all important, and crispness of playing is what's going to produce a, a result that people really appreciate. So let's look at this uh, right from scratch and see what's involved. Now the place to start is what I would call the basic chord, and this is chord one, the chord that's based on the root of the key that you're playing in. We've got uh, a G harmonica, I'm using a G harmonica, and we're playing in the key of D, and we get this chord just by drawing. I'm ditching our electricity just for the moment. Uh, we're drawing on the bottom three holes. Now, a number of people seem to find this quite difficult. Perhaps uh, partly it's because they're new to the instrument, partly uh, maybe it's a new harmonica straight out of the box and still a bit tight. But what you're aiming for is a nice resonance in the chord with uh, every note in it playing evenly. So, just again. Sounds very easy, and perhaps for you it is, but that's the place to start. Now I mentioned before, crispness of playing is uh, very important in this uh, vamping style of uh, playing blues harmonica. So let's see how you can make a crisp start to the chord, and this is what we call a tack. So if you just play the chord naturally, you play but what we really want to do is to make that start of the chord very crisp. So bring your tongue away from your top teeth sharply. And the limit of this particular technique, if you like, is to make the sound almost all explosion and very little chord, and this has all sorts of applications, so we might as well discuss it now. So the sound we're looking at now is... So, uh, you're not really inhaling, the air is coming in just from the motion of your tongue. And uh, that can be very useful uh, in certain places when you're, when you're playing chordally in and a vamping style. Now, the second most important chord is instead of drawing, we blow. And as it turns out, if you blow anywhere on the harmonica, you're actually producing the same chord, just different inversions of it. But I think the best place is just above 
the first chord. So if you use the bottom three holes of the first to produce the first chord, the best place for the second chord is just slightly above that. There. And so we can alternate between these two chords for the simplest kind of vamping. Okay, the next step is the beat. Now, some people have a, a natural ability to never be out of time. Others find it more difficult. And uh, one way, I think, uh, to improve your timing if you are having difficulty is to tap your foot. Sounds very simple. Uh, for this section, I've just put a board under my foot. And if I tap it, you can hear it there. I'm using my heel when I sit down because I think the mechanics of the body is such that uh, the heel is easier to tap if you're sitting down. If you're standing up you can use either your toe or your heel. In fact change uh, from one to the other as one becomes less comfortable and uh, move to one that's more comfortable. But certainly uh, sitting down it, uh, is very easy to do and um, it can help you with your timing when you are Vamping. So let's take the basic chord and uh, do this. So and if we introduce the uh, um, second chord we were talking about, it becomes and speeding up a little. Notice that I've gone back to electricity since it um, uh, has uh, quite a lot more power. But, oh dear. We already seem to have entered the domain of uh, train type sounds, so we'll just uh, continue on in this vein. Now, of course, uh, we have uh, roughly replicated a train sound, but we don't have that clackety clack. And in order to do that, we need sub beats. Now, different harmonica players produce these uh, sub beats in different ways. I tend to use a, a D sound, like didda or diddler, nonsense words. But when you say that while you're playing, you get this sort of effect. Or and to put it into context of your actual uh, train sound, it might go something like. Well, I did a few extra things there as well. Uh, one of which was the uh, explosive pops I was talking about before. That has one application when you want to accentuate a beat, sort of thing. Uh, and there are a number of other things there as well. So we're coming to the end of our uh, 10 allotted minutes. A long way to go. We've really only just scratched the surface, uh, but much more in part two. I'm a voodoo child I'm a voodoo child I'm a voodoo child